All right, guys, well, I am sweating my cojones off. It is uh, middle of July, basically, and it is hot here on the Mississippi River. But I think it's going to get hotter because I have, um, I'm, I'm really, really optimistic that the smallmouth are going to be biting today. I mean, I like days like this. I like it when it's really steamy hot on the river. The smallmouth just get uh, amped up. So what I'm actually going to be fishing today is the Berkeley Slobber Knocker. Now, this is a bladed jig. It's got power bait. If you watch this channel at all, you know how much I love power bait, but it's got power bait built into the skirt. These things actually do smell, which I, when I smell power bait, I get excited because I know that it works, especially for smallmouth. So I like that it's got that uh, in this uh, bladed jig, but we're gonna open this thing up, okay, and just see what's going on here. And there's a number of like different, uh, Kind of design like the the way they design this bait is a lot different than a you know like a typical bladed jig like a chatter bait. Um, I'll kind of point that out. I think it's kind of unique. Of course, they got to get around the patents and everything. I imagine, but um, the blade on this uh, bladed jig on the slopper no uh, slobber knocker it actually goes through the head. It's really interesting. It goes through the head. Goes through. Uh, just like the, you know, the if you consider this a jig, it's just that jig head um, goes right through that. This is really, really cool. I like that. I don't know what it's going to mean as far as vibration, if it's going to be more vibration than a regular chatterbait or less vibration. Uh, you tie on to right here, but that's a, that's a pretty big blade. It's got Fusion 19 hooks on it, which I really like the Fusion 19 hooks. Super, super sharp. And it's got a pretty substantial keeper on here. So it just looks really well built. So I'm excited to, uh, to fish it also. Oh yeah. Actually I don't, doesn't sound, smell like, doesn't smell exactly like power bait, but supposedly power bait is built into this thing. So um, that at least gives me confidence. And we all know how important confidence is in fishing. It's like maybe the most important thing. So what I'm gonna pair it up with is a power stinger. This is Berkeley's um, answer to a trailer for a bladed jig. And it's the power stinger, three and a half inches, pearl white. This color that I'm using, because the uh, water today is stained, this is white chartreuse. So we're dealing with pretty high water, stained water. So I just figure that's, uh, that's a good, that white and chartreuse has always been a favorite of mine. So. Uh, you know, with like spinner baits and things like that. So uh, we will pair that up. Let's open this up. Check these power stingers out. Let's see here. Get one of these out. And the thing about a bladed jig is you do not want, uh, you do not want, I talked about this on the last video, but you do not want any action. Okay, you don't want like a curl tail. Uh, you know, any you want just a straight tail on a uh, trailer for a bladed jig. So, uh, looking at this bladed jig, this power stinger, what I really like is this honeycomb design. Okay, and Berkeley. Oh yeah, I just got a whiff of the power bait. Um, it's very, very good. But you notice on this power stinger, it's got like this honeycomb uh, design, less plastic, so it's going to give it more action. And also, I think, too, if you wanted to add extra scent to this, that would hold that well uh, in there. You know, all the, that, uh, that honey, honeycomb kind of design there. Uh, what I like, too, they got slots here that, you know, for uh, just there's less plastic for the hook to go through. So I think that's a good design. It's a realistic tail, which is very cool. Kind of looks like a mermaid's tail or something. I like it. So we'll rig it up. Just like, let's see here, see where it's going to be going into. Of course, the hook's going to be coming out the back. So, looks like we want it to come out just where that honeycomb actually begins. That looks right. Like so. Hopefully you can see that. All right, so that gives me an idea where this hook point needs to come out. Make sure the skirt isn't going to get pinned by the plastic once it gets rigged. So here we go. Now 
always like to make sure I'm coming right perfectly, perfectly to the top of the head here. I'm going to rig this straight, coming straight down, and we're going to come right out right there, like so. Rig it onto that keeper so it holds it in there well. Pull it back a bit so it's straight. And there you go. In all its glory. I mean, look at that morsel. Hello, Dolly. I am ready to go. So, yeah, I'm really excited. The conditions look just fantastic for this today. Uh, high water. All uh, kinds of flooded cover, vegetation, and timber on the river. Timber is where it's at, you know, wood. So let's get this tied up and start tearing into them. There's one. There's one. All right. I got to be really careful in here. Hello, buddy. I am like, <laughs> I got GoPros when I'm out that you know that direction in the sun the gopros are just getting way too hot and shutting down so luckily though as i've gone upstream i'm encountering more like overhanging trees and i'm able to get in the uh you know get in the shade and these gopros are cooling down so uh i'm very happy about that so all right bud yeah it's not a not a big smallmouth by any means, but it's the first smallmouth on the slobber knocker. And he is hooked really, really well. So I'm happy about that. There you go, buddy. First slobber knocker smallmouth I've ever caught. So, yeah, I'm, you know, with bladed jigs, I've been a little just apprehensive about using them you know, for smallmouth on the river because there's just so much cover around here. And these are, you know, as you learned from the last uh, video, if you watched it, that chatterbaits are not weedless and they're not meant to be weedless. They don't work, at least that I've, my experience, they don't work weedless. So you have that open hook and, um, you know, it's a little scary for me, especially in a kayak with, you know, we've got a lot of, you know, we've had high water, a lot of water this year. We've had a lot of rain. So the river's moving pretty good. So, you know, you get snagged, it's a super pain in the ass, quite frankly, to, uh, to, to uh, get it unlodged or whatever. So it's really nice for to use like a spinnerbait. Something weedless is what I've generally uh, tried to fish on the river. But I'm kind of, I, I've just... Chatter baits, you know, bladed jigs are so effective. I I uh, I filmed for Major League Fishing, and so many guys are still using them. I mean, used them. It's just a part, you know. It's a staple. It's like you don't even see spinner baits hardly used anymore. So they're so effective. I mean, when they came on the scene, every they're catching fish like crazy. They're still catching fish like crazy. So I'm like, I gotta start fishing these things more. So. Um, I've just, you know, decided to be a little bit more brave and uh, not worry about getting snagged so much with these and just start fishing these more this summer. Uh, there's one. There's one. Oh my gosh, he stepped off. Wow. Wow. That is unreal. <laughs> he just slammed that. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. In you come. Alrighty. I actually probably don't. This is not the best way to land a fish. I'll tell you that much. Um, I didn't have enough line out when I landed him. But we'll make it work. So it's it's interesting. This I'm not fishing. Uh, come on, buddy. It's. There you go. Um, yeah, we haven't we haven't found the big boys yet, though. But we'll get there. Um, what's interesting, I'm let's see, it's looking like I'm in two and a half feet of water. I would typically, you know, 
if the water was lower, I typically wouldn't fish this stretch because uh, it's it's kind of you know as far as like I wouldn't fish the bank of this stretch because it's when the water's more of a uh, normal level, it's not it's not it's more slow you know and shallow. Uh, out here, it's it's better. It's flowing really good, you know, even if it's lower water. But it's in the bank here, to the, uh, typically it's just it's a lot slower and shallower up here. But because we've had high water, it's the current's moving through here pretty good. I'm looking for current breaks. Um, you know, trees are making uh, you know anything falling in the water. But I mean, I'm even. I mean, I'm fishing trees, uh, laydowns anything that's breaking that current trying to basically concentrate on those areas but i think the bigger fish we need a little bit deeper water here for these bigger fish to be in and that's typically i'd like to find about if you can find four or five feet of water in the summertime current moving through and in like a, a let's say a log or something in the water or snags you know a bunch of you know logs bunched up but you need current working through there and you need more depth typically um, especially i mean it's basically uh it's like seven o'clock right now in the evening and it's really hot like if i get out in the sun these things these gopros are gonna be shutting down and the, the water temperature is nearly 80 degrees it's 79.8 here so i think to find those bigger fish, we need to find, you know, four foot plus near the bank or wherever, preferably, preferably near the bank because that's where the shade is right now. But, um, and, you know, good amount of current. In the summertime, you want current. You need current, you know, for really to attract smallmouth. And, but you need current and a current break. And that's what you're looking for. You want a current, hitting a current break. Uh, when you get into the colder uh, water months, then you want to be looking for more slack water. But this time of year, you need current near cover. So I want that and I want depth right now. There's one, there's one. Oh, nice, that's a good one, giant giant oh my gosh oh my gosh hang on buddy oh he was right right in there golly is he mad and i mean we are in the current right here get out of that tree this is crazy i mean i i'm, I'm right in the thick of the current right here and what's great about <laughs> golly this is wild this is a good one um, I don't, I, I'm just going to have to, I got to find a speed that is about the speed of the current here and just try to lock in. God, this is a nice one. What I feel confident though, and is that this hook, this is a big hook on this slobber knocker. Oh, this is a good fish. Net, please. It's a real big hook on this thing. Ah, uh, yes. And, uh, I mean, you, you know, this, you don't want to get too confident that the, that the fish has got it good, but man, you know, I just feel like these conditions of fish are going to be just chomping, you know, once you get a spot that's just ideal, whew, look at this one, let's let some line out here. Look at this. Now we're talking. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love July for smallmouth. I love July for smallmouth. The GoPros don't like it, but um, the smallmouth like it. You know, it's like 80 degree water temperature. I gotta just make sure I don't absolutely uh, get caught up in these overhanging trees, but <laughs> isn't that beautiful? Ah, what a beautiful smallmouth. Thank you, buddy.
there you go and down it goes okay so one of the things uh i've noticed about this chatter well it is a well i guess it's not a chatter bait it's a slobber knocker about this blade bait is that it's got a really really big blade on it and so you know you're pulling this thing and it's vibrating like crazy and it's kind of acting like a weed guard okay so there is some uh you know when you're pulling this thing i guess it's probably it's probably about that angle just going crazy you know so that's doing that in front of the hook here and it's kind of acting as a uh as a weed guard so that's one thing i've noticed um and it's giving me more confidence to throw this thing where i'd be you know typically be a little bit more leery to throw a a bladed jig this big blade on here it is acting as a you know acting as a weed guard i feel like so something to be aware of let's go try to catch another one of those Oh my god, this is a big fish. This is a giant Oh! That is so... Oh my god. That is so disappointing. That was a giant. Giant. I am using... I'm using 20 pound Berkeley Trilene XT and it broke that line. And this is new line. And I'm not saying that, you know, I'm, it's, I mean, it, I was checking it and, it, oh man, it wasn't like, I mean, it wasn't, the line wasn't getting torn up or anything. I was checking it pretty routinely. Oh, that was a big, Big fish. Just uh, hopefully you can see this in here, but there's just a ton of lay downs and trees, and that was just a really, really big fish. I hadn't, I haven't had a fish pull that hard. I don't know if ever. That was crazy. And where we're at right here, I mean, this is so ideal. It's five feet of water right here, and we got wood. Oh. That just hurts. Hurts, man. I mean, oh, oh, <laughs> I'm just. Oh my lord, are they in here? And I just broke one off again, right, right at the kayak. What is going on? Oh my god, there are giants in here. That was a big, big fish. I mean, I typically just have the drag tightened all the way down, but I'm gonna just, I'm gonna back off the drag a bit. These fish are just absolutely, that was a, I hate, that sucks. Oh my God, that was another big fish. The problem is with that one, it just hit right at the kayak. I gotta get my act together here. Oh, I've lost two big fish in short order here, right in this area where we got all this wood, we got depth. My graph isn't working all of a sudden for some reason, but whatever. Sun's getting low. I gotta kinda make the best. Uh, I gotta do the best I can right now with <laughs> just with a little bit of light I have left. And I'm getting really amped up because these fish are just on fire right now. And uh 
like I'm really, I mean, I hate doing that. I hate losing fish and having those fish have a bait in their mouth, you know. But, um, oh my God, that's frustrating. Super frustrating. I'm just kind of at a loss right now. That hasn't, that hasn't happened to me in a while, something like that. I mean, these are, this is 20 pound test I'm using. I'm typically using like 17 pound also. So I'm gonna loosen up the drag a little bit. Um, yeah, dang it. There he is. God dang it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Missed it, came back for it. Missed it. Or got off. Boy, they're chomping right now. I'm also in just a really great area. Wood all around, current and depth. He's running right at me. What's going on? Oh boy. Okay, he's just he's just mad. He's just mad. Come aboard. We're gonna keep on fishing, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh boy, okay. We're looking for your big brother. And I can't seem to get a thumb on your mouth here. We're looking for his big brother. There's a good one. There's a good one. He's right. I got it. I am loosening the drag. Oh my gosh. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Oh my gosh. I... God. Just. Oh my Lord. I am just, honestly, I'm rusty. At least the line didn't break, but these, I'm rusty, man. I mean, this is the first time I've fished this stretch since last year. And this water temperature, these fish are so strong. They're so strong, man. I can't emphasize how strong they are. And I'm using, I mean, I'm using 20 pound. It's the most test I've ever used here on the river, you know, doing this kind of thing. This is my spinnerbait rod I'm using. And I'm just having to, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm using less drag than I've typically used, but these fish are so full of just, you know, urine and vinegar <laughs> that you can't, I mean, I, I just, I like to have it a little, I don't know, I'm just going to keep it right there. I'm just going to keep it relatively loose. Uh, but, you know, you want to, you want to have it pretty tight, you know. Just to make sure that they really get it, you know, when you're retrieving there, there's no slip, you know, so it's setting the hook, then, you know, they're basically setting the hook themselves, or when you're reeling, you're kind of setting the hook, but, man, they're just, you got to be, be really, really careful having it too, too, uh, that drag too tight, because they're so strong. There's one. There's one. Yes. Right where he should have been, and that drag was right. I mean, it was slipping, but I was actually thumbing this thing. You know, actually just holding my thumb down on it so it wouldn't slip anymore, just to make sure I got a good hook into it. Oh my gosh. It's not easy to be right in the current trying to pick these dudes off. 
Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. Oh, I came over to the other side. Just I saw some some wood over here, and we actually had a little bit light, more light over here. So I was like, okay, I got to get over there and fish this wood before it gets any darker. So let's try to catch a real big giant, real big giant out of this stretch of wood right here. Well, I think we're gonna have to call it a night. We do not have a whole lot of light left. So kind of a, um, a haphazard day, I'll put it that way. Really like this bait though. Uh, no problems with the bait, this big thumping blade. I really like. I didn't say this earlier, I don't think, but this is a 3 8 ounce uh, slobber knocker and I'm using a three and a half inch uh, power stinger as a trailer on this. So that 3 8 ounce, uh, you know, um, slobber knocker I think is just a better, you know, that three and a half inch um, power stinger on there. I think that's a good size for that 3 8 ounce uh, slobber knocker. So. I just really, uh, very, very haphazard. Um, I'm very rusty still. It's crazy. It's the middle of July, basically, and I'm still kind of like just that. I mean, it's the first time I've been on this stretch of the river. These are very big fish up here, and I just got to get my act together. Um, I think I might actually go up to 25-pound test on that. Uh, you know, 25. I love Berkeley Trilene, although I'm a little mad at it today. I don't, <laughs> but... 25 pound, uh, I might consider Berkeley Trilene XT. I like that uh, green, Lovis green, but super disappointing, super disappointing though. I should have had some, you know, I just should have, I just didn't execute very well. Very ugly, ugly uh, fishing for me uh, today, but we did manage a good one. Thanks for watching.